All right, I want to talk just a little bit here about the real purpose behind the NIV. Okay, one of the real purposes. Of course, we know that the real purpose, the true purpose, is to be a counterfeit and replace the King James Version. See, if I hold these two Bibles up right now, you can't tell me which one is which just by looking at the back. They both look like Bibles. But the reality of it is, they're not the same. Okay, the NIV, I've documented thousands and thousands and thousands, thousands of verse deletions, additions, perversions, okay, where there is a clear agenda to destroy vital doctrines that appear in the King James Version. Okay, the Roman Catholic Church is behind the NIV. It was partially translated to Catholic University. It's based on the Vatican's text. The Nestle's text is made under the supervision of the Vatican. So it is a, there's definitely, I mean that's, I've done other videos on it, you can watch those. But there's another purpose to the NIV. And a lot of you know this already, but I'm just going to go over it in more detail today. But the NIV is owned by HarperCollins Publishing. HarperCollins is owned by Rupert Murdoch, the owner of Fox Television. So why would a guy who basically owns secular television and also prints pornography and sex manuals and things like that, why would he want to buy a Bible? Well, because it's a good money maker. And I'm going to show you from Zondervan's website, I'm going to show you in their own words uh, what kind of activity is going on there. I didn't write this thing. This is from Zondervan Corporation. Okay, so let me show you a little bit more detail. Okay, here we have Zondervan Corporation. I couldn't get the whole uh, link here thing up. It doesn't go the whole way over, but it's this is. You can go there and you can check it out for yourself. Zondervan.com. Statistics. Wholly owned subsidiary of HarperCollins Publishing Incorporated. Sales. 160 million. Okay, there you go. That's your reason for the NIV. Makes a lot of money. But let me show you some of the stuff down here. 1987 is when Harper and Rowe buy Zondervan in the aftermath of the takeover attempt. Zondervan ultimately becomes a subsidiary of HarperCollins. 2002, Rick Warren's The Purpose Driven Life is published by Zondervan. Rick Warren is a member of the CFR. He is a, a stooge of the New World Order, basically. 2004, a gender-neutral edition of the NIV causes controversy. Actually, it was before that. 2001 is when the TNIV New Testament came out, first came out. 2005 is when the whole Bible came out. Okay, and look at this one. 2005, Rolling Stone magazine causes a media firestorm after refusing a Zondervan ad. That's right. The NIV people wanted to advertise in Rolling Stone magazine, and Rolling Stone said, no, we don't want Bibles in our magazine. And they, I, don't, I can't say that they sued them, but they basically put pressure on until Rolling Stone had to put Zondervan ads for the TNIV in their magazine. Just unbelievable what these people will go to to sell Bibles. Okay, now it says, uh, down here it says about the history and things, it says extending its reach beyond the evangelical market with such bestsellers as Rick Warren's The Purpose Driven Life and the Veggie Tales books for children. I'm going to do more on the Veggie Tales in the future, uh, some problems I have with that. But it says here, the nation's leading Bible publisher, speaking of Zondervan, and continues to develop products for its evolving Christian market. Okay, right there, I got a big problem with that. Christianity is not Right today, modern Christianity in America and around the world does not resemble what was in the book or book of Acts and, and even in the Bible. This thing called modern Christianity is not scriptural. It's, it's wicked. It is the great falling away of the end times. Okay, but here it says, The following year, 1971, Zondervan made an investment in the financially troubled International Bible Society's tra translation of the New International Version of the Bible, a move that would later repay itself many times over. Isn't that amazing? The, the NIV, right from the very beginning, was in financial trouble, and it was bought out by Zondervan, and they had to promote it then. But it says, 
It isn't, you know, and God really blessed us. No, they don't talk that way. It's, it repays itself many times over. Boy, it was a good moneymaker. They write just like lost people, and there's a reason for that. With the NIV also came the opportunity to create many derivative works, such as concordances and study materials. Cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> uh, Ruckman's Law, if it don't make sense, there's a buck in it. Yeah, all of which found a ready market. Why would they do this? Why would they be doing all this? Because there's money in it. That's why. Here we have when the company was finally sold over a year later for $56.7 million to Harper and Rowe. $56.7 million. That's good money there. Harper and Rowe, which soon merged with British, British religious book company Collins, publishing to become Harper Collins, was owned by News Corporation Limited headed by Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch's other interests include the Fox Film and Television Studios and several tabloid news publications. Yeah, filthy, rotten tabloids. Zondervan employees and the company's chairman, Emeritus, or Emer, however you say that, I don't care, it's that nonsense, expressed concerns that the publisher's traditional religious evangelical focus would be changed as part of a more aggressive pursuit of profits much as they had also worried about more morons, just, well, moran, <laughs> probably moron, uh, intentions several years earlier. They were having these big people coming in that were turning it into a big money-making scheme, which is all it is, by the way. In some cases, Zondervan secured authors it might not have been able to attract on its own because of its association with HarperCollins. There you go. More money. By 1991, the company's estimated annual sales were 175 million, up from 106 million just four years earlier. So you link up with secular book publishers, and boy, look at the look at the increase in profits. Wow, yeah. Does it say anything about God really blessing us or the Lord really? You know, no, nothing at all. God's not even mentioned. The publishing division issued an average of 130 new titles a year, including Bible editions tailored to specific audiences such as women and teens. Now, if you go to a used bookstore, you will find just title after title, Women's Devotional Bible, Women's New Mother's Devotional Bible, Teens Devotional Bible, Teen Extreme Devotional Bible, Teen Sports Edition Devotional Bible. That's what they have to do to make the NIV sell. You see, the NIV is a dead book and it needs to be continually revived with new additions. The NIV Bible is what we're talking about here. I just highlighted that to show you it's about the NIV. It says the company continued to capitalize on its successes, issuing many derivative works and variant versions. Increasingly, Bible sales were being targeted to specific niche groups. One method of uh, repackaging the NIV was to create a devotional Bible, which added numerous prayers and commentaries directed toward a specific audience, such as mothers with young children or retirees. In late 1994, the Christian Book Sellers Association sales chart of best-selling Bibles, which had been topped by the NIV for several years, saw Zondervan's products holding all of the top 10 slots. It was estimated that 45% of all Bibles sold were NIVs, especially those directed to niche markets such as women, teens, and children. So, like I just got done saying, they had to market it. They had to use secular marketing techniques to sell the piece of garbage that the NIV is. Zondervan's former chain of bookstores okay, reported shipping more than $200,000 worth of King James Bibles back to publishers. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe because the carnal, lukewarm Christians of today don't want the Word of God. They can't understand it because they're spiritually dead, many of them. Despite the industry-wide industry slowdown, Zondervan was only slightly affected and unveiled plans for devotional Bibles targeted at college students and African Americans. <laughs> so here, oh, we, we haven't hit up these people yet for their money. You know, just unreal. Now let's go to this. It says, when a report in a Christian publication implied the changes were being made to satisfy feminists, anger was stirred up among fundamentalists. 
and Zondervan put the project on the back burner. The International Bible Society, which was responsible for the NIV and NIRV, also announced it would revise the NIRV back to the older NIV language standards to appease fundamentalists. Now you're going to see this thing a lot among these modern professing Christians. They say, well, we're evangelical, we're not fundamentalists. I'm not a fundamentalist. You know, well, let me just tell you something. I don't, call, I don't walk around calling myself a fundamentalist, but I sure do believe in the fundamentals. And if you do not believe in those fundamentals, you're not saved. Let me show you the five fundamentals that make up what is called fundamentalism.